Howdy folks, Jabberiki here. This is Don Bluth. Bluth started out as an animator at Disney, then he founded his own animation company. Bluth has since become one of the most well-known and renowned names in the animation industry. Bluth took children's cinema in a completely new, bold direction, proving that kids could handle complex, dark, or sophisticated themes. But not everything he touches is gold. He has lost his mojo from time to time. So I'm going to be counting down my personal top five best and worst Don Bluth films. Keep in mind, I'm only going to be counting Bluth's feature films, so don't expect Banjo the Woodpile Cat or the small one to end up on either of my lists. Again, I must remind you that these lists are based on my own personal choices, my own opinion. They're not supposed to reflect your opinion or the world's opinion, just mine, okay? With all that being said, let's first discuss my top five worst choices. Number 5. Bartok the Magnificent This movie is a spin-off from Don Bluth's fairy tale musical Anastasia, which follows Rasputin's psychic Bartok, who goes on his own quest to rescue a Russian prince from the evil witch Baba Yaga, who gives him a series of tasks to complete. Now, I wouldn't exactly call Bartok the Magnificent a bad movie. It's quite cute and easy to sit through, but if you were to pull my arms, I would definitely say that it's one of Don Bluth's weaker movies. This is Bluth's only straight-to-video film to date, and it really shows. There's a huge lack of ambition behind it, and not much seems to happen before we reach the finale. With Bartok taking very little time to complete each task he faces, spending most of the film incessantly talking out loud. Sure, his verbal diarrhea was a trait that he had in Anastasia, but he was just the villain's minion in that film, not the lead character. When it comes down to it, I honestly didn't feel like I'd experienced much as a viewer after watching Bartok the Magnificent. It's not awful, but it's not great either. Number 4. Fumbelina In this adaptation of the Hans Christian Andersen story of the same name, a thumb-sized young woman called Fumbelina meets a fairy prince and falls in love with him. But she ends up getting lost from home, and all the tiny creatures of the outside world want her as a wife. Oh boy. This movie is quite the hodgepodge of bad or lazy ideas. Fumbelina herself lacks agency, because she doesn't do much besides become kidnapped, get easily distracted, and spend the whole movie whining that she wants to go home. Plus, her relationship with the fairy prince is incredibly rushed, declaring it as romantic love despite only meeting him just a few hours ago. Not to mention, Fumbelina's animal sidekick is a bird called Giacomo. Yes, a bloody bird. A creature that could quite easily pick her up and fly her back home. Instead, he just acts all whimsical and dishes out useless advice like, believe in your heart. What a dick. Oh, and there's way too many antagonists. The movie crowds its cast with four or five different bad guys, which makes us wonder who the main villain is supposed to be. None of these evildoers are even remotely interesting or threatening either. They all have silly designs and share the same motive, marry or exploit for Bellina. The cream on top of this movie's disastrous creative decisions has to be its sleazy attempts at imitating Disney formulas from the film's love duet sounding eerily like Aladdin's A Whole New World. Let me be your wings, let me be your only love, let me take you far beyond the stars. I can show you the world, shining, shimmering, splendid. Tell me, princess, now when did you last let your heart decide? The casting Disney voice actors in very similar roles. Ariel's Jodie Benson as the wide-eyed innocent Fumbelina, Iago's Gilbert Gottfried as a cheeky loudmouth villain, and King Triton's Kenneth Mars as the fairy king. It's shocking how hard the movie tries to cash in on Disney's style. It's not the only time that Bluth tried to imitate his rivals. He'd later do it again with Anastasia, which led to mixed results that are better explained in my review of that film. All in all, Fumbelina is simple fairy tale fluff that slides itself comfortably into templates designed by Bluth's rival studio. 
Sure, it's cute, but it's also an example of Don Bluth slacking off in the imagination department. Number 3. The Pebble and the Penguin in this film, a penguin called Yubi must get back home and propose to his lover Marina before the vicious Drake weds her first. Luckily, he gets some help from a penguin who wants to fly called Rocco. This movie's biggest crime is being the most boring Don Blue film. At least the other films on my worst list are interestingly bad. Terrible or rubbish in their own unique ways. The Pebble and the Penguin is just cookie cutter babysitter fodder. Hubie makes for an irritatingly bland hero because his only defining traits are clumsy and in love. The film's adventure story is immensely uneventful and mainly made up of pointless annoying songs. Marina has no agency and is just in the film to serve as the love interest. While Drake is a dullest dishwater villain, he's just a high school jock bully with the body of a penguin on steroids. Plus, Rocco is a passive-aggressive dickhead that goes from strangling Yubi one second to calling him his best friend the next. The film was so awful that Don Bluth himself insisted that his name should be taken off the credits. Yes, even the man himself felt ashamed of this shallow waste of time. Number 2. Rockadoodle Rockadoodle follows a little boy called Edmund, who ends up being turned into an animated cat and must convince a rock star rooster called Chanticleer to stop singing on stage and start singing for the sun to come out. While Chanticleer's farmyard friends are willing to help Edmund, an evil owl wants to stop him to make sure that it stays night forever. No, I did not make any of that up. That is seriously the story for this movie. Now, if I was to best describe this movie, I would say that it's like Robin Hood meets the Page Master, but on crack cocaine! Holy fuckballs, this movie is a complete train wreck. It has no clue about what it's doing. It throws random ideas and fast-paced visuals at the screen without much confidence in where it's going with its batshit nonsense. I swear that Don Bluth was smoking some weird-ass plant while directing this film because it's such a messy and confused movie. It's not even trippy and nonsensical in a fun way, because everything is so frantic, overcrowded and obnoxious. This movie wants to be 12 films at once while attempting to steal your sanity right from underneath your feet. All I kept thinking while watching this film was, what the hell am I watching? What is going on? And when will it end? It really is a disaster of a movie that lacks Bluth's usual charm and competence. Oh, I'm a furry. Well, kittens are furry. But, but I'm a little boy. Number one, a troll in Central Park. In this movie, a troll called Stanley is sent to Central Park for being too nice and spends the day with a baby called Rosie and her big brother Gus. I'm not kidding, that is the film in a nutshell. This film is heartbreaking to watch because it's Don Bluth at his lowest point. Bluth abandons any sense of respect for the children in the audience and himself in favour of easy pandering. It's a film where barely anything happens, threat or tension is kept to a minimum, and no bold risks are made behind the scenes. Everything about the film is insufferable, from Stanley the Troll, whose only emotion is overbearing happiness, to the whiny self-entitled children we're supposed to relate to. It's a movie that suffocates us with sugar-coated whimsy and refuses to provide anything enriching or clever. What sours the film even more is its terrible message of, if you dream, anything is possible, which is a lousy way of inspiring kids, because achieving goals also takes hard work, strong will, and intense effort. Three things that this film clearly didn't put into practice during production. Children deserve so much better than this, and what's worse is that Don Bluth can do better than this. It's a hollow and shallow film that left me feeling empty and unfulfilled. Don Bluth himself actually looks back at the film in regret, once stating in an interview, As it is never a good thing that a child is born prematurely, so it is with producing a film. Development of a script is like the development of a child in the womb. It takes time, it must be done right. Building the movie A Troll in Central Park taught us this lesson, but indeed the hard way. I tell you all this in the hope that you might benefit from our foolish mistakes. Scrutinizing your own work is so important, but let's face it, we are all afraid of not measuring up, so we stubbornly cling to our own opinions, 
shutting out all others. Stanley could have been a richer character with more levels to his personality. Maybe he could have had a dark side, a troll side that he struggled with. I do respect Dom for owning up to the film's downfall, because it really is insulting, implying that quality control and intelligence can be ignored if children are watching. Which is bullshit. Children don't deserve to be treated like gullible idiots, whether in school, at home, or at the cinema. So those are my choices for the top 5 worst on blue films, but let's not forget that he's made some good films too. Here are my top 5 best on blue films choices. Number 5. All Dogs Go to Heaven All Dogs Go to Heaven is about a dog called Charlie, who ends up being murdered by his business partner Carface. He's sent up to Dog Heaven, which seems perfect, but isn't Charlie's cup of tea, so he escapes back to Earth, where he meets a little orphan girl called Anne-Marie, who can talk to animals. Charlie exploits Anne-Marie's talents to win at gambling in races, only to realise that there's more to life than money. I'll admit that All Dogs Go to Heaven is rough around the edges, its storytelling is very scattered, and its animation looks a bit jittery. But what I love about it is that it's going for its own thing and embracing its ambitions with high confidence. It can get really weird and dark, but that's why I admire it. It doesn't shy away from taking bold risks or giving us wild ideas, but the film isn't being strange for the sake of it. It believes in itself and tries to tell an engaging fable about finding light in the darkness. Sure, it's not as polished as the other films on my best list, but it's certainly the most unique. I love its passion, I love its sincerity, and I love its ambition. Number 4. Titan AE Titan AE is set in a timeline where humans are a rare breed, and it's up to a group of humans to boldly search for the secret history of their race. Originally a box office flop, Titan AE has since gained a cult following, and I can see why. It's a very fun and entertaining sci-fi movie packed with energetic action and a cool cyberpunk visual style. It's the Don Bluth movie that's closest to being an adult film, and I respect Blue for making an animated feature that's more accessible to older audiences, offering young adults plenty of interesting science fiction mythos and some relatable characters that are their age. Titan AE is a very enjoyable space opera that superbly showcases what Don Bluth can do for mature audiences. Number 3. The Lamb Before Time this prehistoric adventure movie centers on a group of young dinosaurs who have been separated from their families after an earthquake and must venture to the Great Valley to meet them. This is a very brutally honest movie that addresses many dark themes. What I respect the most about it is the way it handles the topic of death. It respects children enough to present the concept of death as sincerely as possible, while also leaving an uplifting message about accepting the passing of loved ones. It is nobody's fault. The great circle of life has begun. But you see, not all of us arrive together at the end. What will I do? I miss her so much. And you'll always miss her, but she'll always be with you, as long as you remember the things she taught you. While Escapers Fantasy is great for kids because it fuels their imagination, I do think that it's also good to introduce the real world to children at the right time, because it helps them better prepare for their life ahead. There's only so long we can safety blanket and sugarcoat reality for kids before they require certain knowledge and awareness to survive in the real world. This film also writes child characters really well, showing how volatile and temperamental but also loving and affectionate they can be. Kids aren't perfect, they're just as human as adults, and the film knows this, leading to some solid relatable drama. It's a powerful film that pushes its characters to put their heart and soul into surviving as a herd. It's truly a classic. Number 2. An American Tale in this movie, a little mouse called Fievel ends up being separated from his family when they emigrate from Russia to New York. He must reunite with his family while being caught between the New York Mice's rebellion against the local cats. This is a gut-wrenching movie, a film that torments us by frequently showing us how close Fievel is to his family but holding back their reunion for what feels like hours. This makes their eventual meetup all the more satisfying because it's been teased for so long. Bluth has stated that you can make a bleak kids movie if you give them a happy ending. 
Alongside this tale of divided family is a celebration of cultural camaraderie. There's something triumphant and inspiring about watching these mice band together to take on the cats. They put aside their differences to save their kind from a menace that's making their lives hell. The fact that many scenes intentionally juxtaposed with images of humans going through the same situations as our heroes adds a sophisticated dimension to the movie that can be appreciated by older audiences. An American Tale is a movie that bravely embraces its somber mood and dark content but rewards the audience for sticking through it. It's a golden treasure in Blue's filmography. Number 1. The Secret of Nim This adventure film centers on a mouse called Mrs. Brisby, whose home is in danger, but she can't easily move her family away because her son Timmy is sick. So she travels to the mystical society known as Nim, where she seeks help and ends up discovering the truth about her late husband. This movie is without a doubt Don Bluth's magnum opus. Mrs. Brisby herself makes for a badass and awesome lead heroine. She may be a timid mouse, but her love for her children encourages her to never give up and put her blood, sweat and tears into protecting her family, no matter the risks. But the film isn't just about Mrs. Brisby. It also presents its young audience with questions about science, ethics, the supernatural and politics. As Brisby gets caught up in a debate between divided rats in Nim. Sure, some of these topics may go over younger children's heads, but older children will feel respected, knowing that adults trust them to maybe challenge what the rats are arguing. The Secret of Nim is a thought-provoking movie with a badass heroine that really cements why Don Bluth deserves to be recognized as a noteworthy director and a household name. So, those are my choices for the top 5 best Don Bluth films. I hope that you enjoyed my lists, and I'm very curious to find out which ones you would choose. Let me know in the comments section below. I've been Jambariki, and I hope you enjoyed this countdown. If you did, then please consider supporting me on my Patreon. With enough sponsors, I could start making countdown videos like this more frequently. And if you're working on a creative project, and you'd like to hire me as an actor, writer, or editor, then go over to my services page. So, what am I going to be doing for my next top 5 best and worst list? Well, that's entirely up to you folks. I've left a poll in the description box below. I'm very excited to find out which franchise, studio or director you want me to do next. Cheerio folks.